Praise be Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. My name is Matthew Knight, and I'm a seminarian here at St. Mary's Parish in Eugene, Oregon. And on behalf of all of us here at St. Mary's, and indeed all the priests in the Eugene area, I wish you a very blessed beginning to this season of Advent. Now, as you well know, an important part of our preparation for the great feast of Christmas during these weeks of Advent, which are so marked by longing and expectation of the coming of the Lord, is to make a good and holy confession. This act of seeking the Lord's mercy and forgiveness by confessing our sins helps to prepare our souls to receive the coming of our Lord, the infant King, who will be born in the manger at Bethlehem. So to prepare ourselves for his advent, for his great coming, we examine our consciences. We consider the sins that we have committed, what we have done and what we have failed to do, in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. And by making this examination of conscience, when we do go to the sacrament of, of penance and we make our confession to the Lord, we will be better prepared to confess everything that may be weighing upon our souls and to seek the Lord's mercy down to the most profound depths of our being. We want to hold nothing back from him, for he is a just and merciful judge. Therefore, friends, I offer you this video examination of conscience. This is in lieu of a, of a communal penance service. You know, due to the COVID-19 restrictions, we will not be able to gather together in our various parishes for penance services this year, as has normally been the custom in the past. So instead, I offer you this video, and I invite you to take a little time in your homes to prayerfully reflect on these questions, which I'm about to offer, and to consider the sins which may be weighing upon your consciences, so that when you next seek the sacrament of penance, you can offer them all to the Lord in confidence and humility to receive his mercy and love. Now, in terms of when you can next receive this great sacrament, please go to catholiceugene.com. There's a link in the description to this video. And by going to that website, click on Liturgical Times, click on Confession, and you'll find an up-to-date schedule for all of our parishes in Eugene. So you can find the next most convenient time for you to go make your holy confession and receive the Lord's gifts and prepare your soul for his coming this Christmas. The church has given us a very handy way to prepare for holy penance by using the traditional list of the seven deadly sins. Now, if you don't have these memorized, you can easily commit them to memory using the acronym PLACES G. So the word PLACES, the first of the deadly sins, P, is pride. Then you have L, lust. A for anger. C for covetousness. E for envy, a little bit distinct there. S for sloth, and the G at the end is for gluttony. So as we prepare to examine our consciences, we'll begin with pride, which St. Thomas Aquinas calls the queen and mother of all the vices. This is the capital sin par excellence. This was the sin of Satan, which caused him to fall from heaven, to place his own will above that of God. So as we examine our own consciences for the sin of pride, better known in our modern day, perhaps, by the word narcissism. Let's consider, have I refused to admit my own weaknesses? Have I dwelt on the failings of others? Have I judged others unfairly in my thoughts or words? Have I ranked myself better than others? Have I borne hatred or disdain for another? Have I refused to learn from others? Have I been irritable with others? Have I been critical of others? Have I been slow to listen to others and quick to speak over them? Have I been stubborn, refused to admit that I was wrong? Have I refused to accept that another person had a better idea? Have I been arrogant? Have I held others in contempt? Have I reacted negatively when questioned? 
Under the umbrella of the sin of pride as well fall the sins of timidity or cowardice, or to use the traditional name pusillanimity, that quality of being small-souled. This is the opposite of pride, and yet the sin stems from the same source, undue concern with myself. So with regard to these sins of pusillanimity or cowardice, we can ask ourselves, have I neglected to use the talents that God has given me? Have I shied away from my duties or from doing or saying what is right and necessary because of fear of how others will respond? Have I failed to give witness to my Christian faith in public? Have I failed to stand up for those for whom it was my duty to defend? Another way the sin of pride can express itself is through vanity, which is excessive concern about what others think about me, not just my appearance, but about my identity. And so in connection with this sin, we can ask ourselves, have I been overly concerned with what others think of me? Have I allowed this to motivate my actions? Have I failed to follow God's will because of a fear of what others might think about me if I did? Have I lied or exaggerated to make myself look good? Have I wasted undue time or money on my clothes or my appearance? Have I been content with my lowly position or have I resented the role that Christ asks of me? Do I constantly take selfies or spend time primping and correcting my hair, clothing, or other aspects of my appearance? Now, the second deadly sin is that of lust. Lust is a disordered desire for sexual or emotional pleasure. So in connection with this sin, let us examine ourselves with the following questions. Have I maintained good custody of the eyes? Or have I allowed them to wander or to linger unduly on someone who I find attractive? And here we recall the words of our Lord, whoever looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Have I viewed other people as mere objects of pleasure rather than as persons to be loved and served? Have I viewed pornography or related sexual or sexualized material on the internet or on TV or social media? Have I engaged in romantic fiction leading to sexual fantasy? Have I entertained impure thoughts? Have I committed a sexual act outside of the covenant of marriage, either alone or with another? The third deadly sin is that of anger, which is also called wrath. St. Thomas Aquinas teaches us that the sin of anger, which is distinct from simply the emotion of anger, is caused by an undue desire for vengeance, a disordered desire to get back at someone who I perceive to have done me wrong. And so let us examine our conscience with these questions. Have I harbored resentments? grudges or hatred in my thoughts? Have I nurtured imaginary angry conversations with anyone who's done me wrong? Have I been slow or reluctant to forgive? Have I lost my temper? Have I carried my cross without complaint or self-pity? Or have I been resentful of the burdens which the Lord has given me to carry? Have I been impatient with my family, with co-workers, with events in my life, with sufferings, with sickness, with the cross which the Lord has given me to bear? Now let us examine ourselves according to the sins of avarice and covetousness. Now, avarice is the excessive love of possessing things. We more commonly call it greed. And covetousness, which is related, 
is looking upon the belongings of another person with the desire to possess them. And this can be their material belongings as well as sort of their personal attributes or spiritual belongings, if you will. So let us consider these questions. Have I been overly concerned about my own comfort and well-being? Have I been resentful of my lack of money or resources? Have I been generous in giving? Have I given with a cheerful heart? Or have I avoided sacrificial giving? Do I only give what is easy to give? Have I cheated, stolen, or failed to pay my bills on time? Have I used people for my own ends and advantages? Have I wasted money on things I don't really need? Now let us examine our consciences with regard to envy, also known as jealousy. Envy, according to the definition of St. Thomas, is a kind of sadness of heart when we see the good that another has. So considering this definition, let us ask ourselves, have I felt envy or have I been jealous of the abilities, talents, ideas, good looks, intelligence, clothes, possessions, money, friends, or family of others? Have I been sad at the good things which God has given to others rather than rejoicing with them at the gifts they have been given? Related to the sin of envy, we must examine ourselves especially with regard to the sin of gossip. And this is one that our Holy Father Francis very often speaks out against. So have I judged others in my thoughts? Have I damaged the reputation of another by my words or even by my attitude or looks, reactions, responses to things that they say or do? Have I repeated accusations that might not be true? Have I exaggerated? Have I failed to defend the reputation of others when I ought to have done so? Have I failed to keep secrets? Have I despised others due to their race, class, or culture? Have I lied or distorted the truth? Now let us examine ourselves with regard to the sin of sloth. Sloth, according to the definition of St. Thomas, is a kind of a sadness, again, when faced with the difficulty of a good which we know we ought to achieve. So rather than striving with vigor and determination to do what we know we ought to do or to be who we know we should be, we allow ourselves instead to become lazy and to fall back into what is comfortable and easy and avoid the difficult and the good. So with regard to this sin, let us ask ourselves, first, have I gotten so caught up in the things of this world that I've forgotten God? Have I sought God above all else? Or have I put other priorities ahead of Him, such as friendships, family relationships, ambition, comfort, and ease? Have I risked losing my faith or piety by bad company, bad reading, bad videos or internet browsing, cowardice or pride? Have I trusted God, especially in times of difficulty? Have I attended Mass each and every Sunday? other than insofar as we are dispensed by the Archbishop due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And if we're not attending Holy Mass on Sundays, have I kept Sunday holy? Have I striven to observe the Lord's Day and to make it a day of rest and prayer? 
Have I neglected to say my daily prayers? Have I entertained distractions in prayer? Or failed to give God due concentration in prayer or in the Mass? Have I made a prayerful preparation before Holy Mass and a good thanksgiving after Holy Mass? Have I received Holy Communion while conscious of being in a state of grave sin? Have I neglected to seek the sacrament of Holy Confession before receiving Holy Communion? Have I taken the Lord's name in vain? or used other foul language. And now, with regard to our neighbors, we can ask ourselves, have I been lazy in helping others? Have I been attentive to the needs of my neighbor, to the needs of my extended or immediate family? Has my conversation been focused on my own pleasure or on others? Has my humor been insensitive to others? Have I been more focused on myself than on the needs of others? Have I spent time with my family? Have I manifested my concern for them? Have I been forgiving and tolerant of them? Or have I scandalized them by a bad or lazy example? Have I wasted other people's time or dishonored them by being late? Or have I failed to keep my commitments regarding being on time? Have I sinned against God and the congregation by showing up late for Holy Mass? Have I gone to sleep on time? Have I made good use of my time or have I wasted time needlessly? For example, by using my phone, by binging on Netflix or TV, gaming, or excessive internet browsing? Have I planned good use of relaxation and recreation into my schedule, knowing that I need to rest well in order to serve well? Finally, let us examine ourselves as regards the sin of gluttony. Now, gluttony is the inordinate desire for, or attachment to, or focus on, or use of not only food, but also other material goods, goods of the body. Again, inordinate attachment or desire, seeking after these goods of the body at the expense of the goods of the soul. So let us ask ourselves, have I consumed more than I need to, more than my body needs? Have I consumed food or drink that is damaging to my body just to satisfy my tastes or appetites? Have I spent time engaging with food or fantasizing about food or other material things that I should have spent elsewhere? Have I spent excessive money on food? Have I consumed alcohol excessively? or spent excessive money on it? Have I driven after drinking excessively? Have I eaten greedily with little consideration for those at table with me? Have I failed to give money to help the hungry? Have I failed to practice fasting and self-denial, especially on Fridays? Have I failed to abstain from meat on Fridays or to do some other act of penance? Have I always fasted one hour before receiving Holy Communion at Mass? Do I spend excessive energy and expense seeking to ensure that my food or my environment is perfectly suited to my desires? Think here about temperature, texture of food or atmosphere in which I live? Do I spend excessive energy and expense seeking comfort? Finally, to conclude our examination of conscience, I'll read for you the Ten Commandments and the five precepts of the Church. 
I, the Lord, am your God. You shall not have other gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. Remember to keep holy the Lord's day. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. And you shall not covet your neighbor's goods. And the precepts of the Church, to attend Mass on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation, unless dispensed by the local bishop, to fast on the days appointed by the Church as days of penance, and to abstain from meat on Fridays and other days of abstinence, to go to Holy Confession at least once a year, and any other time that I'm conscious of being in a state of mortal sin, to make our Easter duty, that is, to receive Holy Communion at least once per year, especially during the season of Easter, to contribute to the support of the Church according to our means, to give in support of our local parish, and to observe Church regulations with regard to the sacraments of Holy Matrimony. Let us now conclude this examination of conscience by offering this prayer before Holy Confession. You can find the text of this prayer in the description to the video, and I encourage all of you to pray this prayer immediately before you go to make your confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive my confession, O most loving and gracious Lord Jesus Christ, only hope for the salvation of my soul. Grant to me true contrition of soul, so that day and night I may by penance make satisfaction for my many sins. Savior of the world, O good Jesus, who gave yourself to the death of the cross to save sinners, look upon me, most wretched of all sinners. Have pity on me and give me the light to know my sins true sorrow for them, and a firm purpose of never committing them again. O gracious Virgin Mary, Immaculate Mother of Jesus, I implore you to obtain for me, by your powerful intercession, these graces from your Divine Son. And Holy Saint Joseph, our Father and Lord, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, I wish you again a most blessed season of Advent as we wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you, protect you from all evil, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen.